Welcome to Solo Travel POV. I'm here today in beautiful Mongolia at the Ulaanbaatar railway station. Join me as we explore the station, do some train spotting, and uncover the Soviet history hidden beneath the tracks. You know Mongolia as the once greatest empire in the world, but the power of Chinggis Khan predates our story today by some 700 years. Instead, this Soviet-style station, built 70 years ago, served as Mongolia's connection to the world, transforming this once isolated, nomadic country. You see, in the early 1900s, the Soviet Union and Mongolia were forming strong bonds. The Mongolian army was an ally to the Soviets during invasions by the Japanese and Germans. In 1941, the Soviet-Japanese Neutrality Pact was signed, which recognized Mongolia as an independent nation and readied the country for the global stage. But then, in the aftermath of World War II, in 1946, a new alliance was born. The Soviet Union and Mongolia signed an agreement that would forever alter the political and geographical landscape of both the countries. This pact led to the construction of a joint venture railroad, marking the dawn of a long-term collaboration between the two nations. This was, and still is, the Trans-Mongolian Railway, a huge system that winds across the vast steppe, connecting Russia's Ulan Ude to China's Beijing through Ulaanbaatar. Even when the Cold War froze the region, and through the disbanding of the Soviet Union, the railway remained a constant, a symbol of Mongolia's enduring ties with its powerful neighbors. Today, Russia still holds 50% ownership of the Trans-Mongolian Railway, and the southern stretch of the railway serves as a vital artery for trade between Mongolia and China. So now, you know the history, let's go explore this historic terminal, and we'll appreciate its grandeur a blend of Soviet-era architecture and Mongolian cultural elements. And as we walk through the station, uncover even more about the rich history here. Welcome back. You can see on this giant Google Maps here that the Ulaanbaatar railway station is now located centrally within the city. And there's some other tourist spots located very close by. Walking into the station now, the architecture is very Stalinist with its large columns and symmetry. Stalinist architecture being a subset of Soviet architecture, and it was used when building large, grandeur palaces. I can only imagine back in the day, it must have been a sight to see this wonderful station arriving all the way from Moscow or even Beijing. All right, let's pop outside and catch some trains. On this train set, you can see a variety of global companies and you know some coal, local transport as well, but that really speaks to the economic impact that the Trans-Mongolian Railway has had for Mongolia. Originally, it should be noted that the Trans-Mongolian Railway was seen only as a political and strategic move to improve Chinese and Soviet relations, but now it's definitely a huge driving force in the Mongolian economy and has helped vault the country into the modern age. Back inside now we can see the Moscow clock on the left, Ulaanbaatar in the middle, and Beijing on the right hand side. Here's some historical images that they've included in the station here. I'll translate 
what the plaques say and leave it on the screen. This CU convenience store has made it all the way from South Korea to Mongolia. Walking around, I've noticed a big South Korean influence in the city. There's a lot of Korean restaurants, the way people dress, and K-pop is very popular. It's definitely a huge change from Soviet Mongolia. There's some chips over here and different flavors of Lay's. It looks like they have sour cream and onion and shashlik or shish kebab and souvlaki. They have Mongolian camel milk and tsantsag airag, which is a Mongolian horse milk drink. I ended up going with this bao bun, my canned coffee, and found a wonderful seat looking out the window to do some train spotting. Back outside, here's my polka black coffee. On the back, it says it's direct from Cyprus. But it also went through Japan, so pretty interesting. I've never had a Japanese, Mongolian, Cypriot drink before. Cheers, everyone. There's a nice memorial here, a nice plaque. You can see the Mongolian and Russian flags at the top. And to translate directly, it says, The memorial plaque was erected in honor of the 60th anniversary of the formation of the Ulaanbaatar Railway Joint Stock. It says this unbreakable friendship of the peoples of Mongolia and Russia and the labor they contributed to build this railway system. Waiting on the tracks is an example of the local passenger railway. This train specifically travels between Ulaanbaatar and Zinjara. That is another city north of Ulaanbaatar, about 175 miles away. I love the bright blue colors on this and I imagine it looks beautiful making its way through the grassy plains in the Mongolian countryside. All right, so when you search for the Ulaanbaatar railway station online, you'll probably see some pictures of this beauty. This is the Soviet locomotive class L. How do I know that? Well, the train is Soviet. And here's a lesson in Cyrillic for all of you back home. That's an L right there. Now you've started your journey of learning Cyrillic or learning how to read like 30 languages, including Greek, Mongolian, and Russian. Here's another tip. If you're researching something from a different country, try using that country's language on Wikipedia, then Google translating the page to your language. Using that, I found a much more expansive Russian page to learn that this locomotive was one of the best Soviet locomotives, and at one point, there was over 4,000 of these beasts out roaming the tracks. I also found this really cool stamp that I hope to find at an antique store one day. Other than that, there was some conflicting notes on either of these Wikipedia pages. Apparently, the Russian page says that this train is adequately named Victory, but the American or English page attributes that to a different locomotive entirely. You can see that there's a lot of train workers here. They've all been very friendly, waving, uh, saying hello and letting me know where to stand. If there's a train coming, they've been showing me a good spot to get some good videos. So just to let you all know, we are here during the time of Nadam. Nadam being an important cultural festival in Mongolia where there's a lot of family get-togethers, food, archery, and wrestling competitions as well. And even though we are here during a holiday, essentially, there's still a lot of transport going on. But that's maybe why you notice there's not as many passengers at the station here and why we haven't seen as many um, passenger transport trains available.
even though we didn't take any trains today, uh, I did want to point out that on the side of the station, there appears to be some type of a lounge or access club if you are taking a train from Ulaanbaatar station. Getting out of the rain here and walking to the other side of the platform now, there's a little underground access area to see some of the other tracks. It looks like there's a little convenience store in here as well that's closed today and we'll make our way through the tunnel. And I really love these posters that they have. There's some posters about construction or, you know, how they built the, the railroads. And then as we walk up here, there's also some warning posters that are that are more safety oriented saying hey make sure you don't play on the tracks stay away from the tracks if you know that a train is coming I wanted to point out the caboose at the end of this train set here. It looks very unique. It's painted bright blue like the other passenger train set that we saw. And I've never seen anything quite like this before. Here we have a, another plaque that is signifying the grant aid that the people of Japan gave to Mongolia to construct some of the railway as well. North of the train station, you'll be able to find this pedestrian bridge. And it's just a normal bridge that <laughs> connects the two neighborhoods over the tracks here. And it does have a really great view of the station, a good view of the city as well. And then over to the right hand side of the bridge, you're able to see the area where they are moving the shipping containers around and more of the logistics area in terms of how all the transport is managed once it makes its way into Mongolia. I've never seen a shipping container crane operating up close before, but it makes sense that they have this located here in Ulaanbaatar, being that Mongolia is a landlocked country. 
I do also want to point out the beautiful mountains that you can see in the backdrop here. Mongolia is a country full of wonderful natural beauty, and this is really only a glimpse of it. More to come on those outdoor adventures in a future video. And finally, to end the video, we have a wonderful Russian and Mongolian joint monument. The plaque here says, This railroad signifies a path of friendship towards a healthy and beautiful future of our countries. This railroad is the way to a happier and better tomorrow. This quote was by Prime Minister Tsitin Balkh, who also served as the General Secretary of the Mongolian People's Revolutionary Party. Tsitin Balkh was responsible for implementing the Cyrillic script into Mongolian society and was the longest serving leader of any Eastern Bloc country. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for coming along on this wonderful Mongolian adventure. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. I look forward to seeing you very, very soon in the next solo travel POV adventure. Bayersla and Bayerta from Mongolia. Thank you and goodbye.